And today I want to share, continue the series related to preparation for the spiritual battle. But today we will learn about the lost sonship identity restored. So that's very, very important. We need to know the sonship, the position that we have in God. And that position lost when Adam and Eve rebels against God, warning. And then when they lost that position, identity as a sonship, everything the son supposed to have basically lost. Lost. But God, with His mercy, He gave them a temporary temporary restoration by sin offering every time. They sin, they give the offering to God. And God restored it. Temporary, not permanently. Because they have to do it again and again every time they sin. Until the Messiah come. Okay, we first we first need to know what is the position, what is the identity. When Adam before sin, when Adam before sin, remember, God created Adam in His own image. That means we have the character of God. We have God nature in us, and even some level of God power in us. But when Adam failed, when Adam sinned, when Adam rebels against God, warning, he lost it. So that's why before, remember, before they sinned, the Bible said they don't wear clothes like we have today. But they don't see their nakedness. Why? Why? Because they have relationship with God. So the glory of God is in them all the time. And that glory is shining over, shining out, radiance out of their body, their, basically their being, wherever they go, the radiant. So that's why the sunlight has no effect on whatever their being is. So that's why when they sin, that glory left them. And then the only light left is the sunlight. Now they see themselves nakedness. This example can easily understand if when you have a floodlight shine or, or the beam shine toward your eyes. You see nothing inside of that beam. But when the beam turn off, the only light is the sunlight. Then you see all the detail inside. That's how what how it happened. And then that's what happened to Adam and Eve. When they sin their nakedness shown. Before sin, the, the glory of God with them. Remember, even temporary, like if you read further in the book of Genesis, Genesis and Exodus, when Moses see God on the mountain of Sinai, when he came down, his face is so shiny, he had to put a cover because people cannot see. People cannot see. Because the light shining from him 
so strong, so he have to cover. So when the, he talked to the people, so that's very clear example you can see. And then not only that, the position that God gave to Adam is above Lucifer. Lucifer doesn't have the image of God, but Adam has. So which means the angel had to bow to Adam before sin. But now, after he fell, he lost all of those. Before he's about Lucifer, he's about principality, he's about power, he's about every power of wickedness. But after he fell, the position reversed. Adam gave the authority, the position, ruling the earth to Satan. So that's why even now the restoration of the earth is not complete. So that's why we need to learn to know all the position before and after. And then the position when Christ comes. So we need to know, we need to understand. Okay, here before restoration, before fail, Adam above Satan, principality, power, and any stronghold and power of wickedness. And then after fail, his position and his authority below Satan, principality, and power, and Adam. So when Adam lost, we all lost. Because all of us, the whole human race, is inside Adam's body. So that's why when he sinned, he, bring, he brought all of us to sin. To, when he's rebelled, all of us rebels against God. So that's why the Bibles give us very clear very clear scripture to tell us this is what happened. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world. That one man is Adam. The first Adam. The, and death through sin. That death. Initially, spiritually dead. That means the relationship between Adam and God broken. Broken. So, that relationship spiritually dead. Even his emotion, his body still lasts for almost a thousand years. But God created Adam and Eve and human race supposed to have eternal life because in the Garden of Eden, God put all kinds of different tree and the tree of life and the tree of words and knowledge. The knowledge of the knowledge good and evil. But as soon as they don't eat the fruit of knowledge good and evil, they just eat the fruit of life, they will have eternal. They don't have to worry about death like us this day. After that, God tell them, because you are dust, you return to dust. So that's what happened to Adam and Eve. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. And so that spread to all men. Because all sin, that's what the Bible said. Okay, that's what the Bible said. All sin. All sin. So that's what we lose our position. We lose our authority. And we had a broken relationship with God. This can be men from time to time when they have sin offering to God. 
not only the relationship, but they lost the identity with God as, as a son. So that's why if we come back to the Genesis after, after they fail. So this is what God tell them. God what tell them. Then Jehovah God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now let he stress how his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. You know when we read when we read up to here we say why God don't let let Adam and Eve eat the fruit of life after their sin. You know God with his mercy, his loving, he doesn't want us or the descendant Adam and descendant of Adam living forever in fear. Remember when God come, when God come, when God, God come and ask Adam, where are you? Then he couldn't find, he couldn't find him. And do you think God know where he is? Yes, God know where he is. But he just give him a chance to make clean of himself. And maybe God gave him a chance to say sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. But no. And then God cast them out. First, they lost the position. They lost the identity. They lost the identity. And then they lost everything. Power, identity, and everything. Everything. They lost everything. So when Jesus comes, he's, he's come for the purpose of restoring whatever loss. Whatever loss. So we see this in Romans chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. In hope against, against hope, he believed in order he might become the father of many nations. This is talking about, this is talking about uh, Abraham. But here he's talking about Adam in verse Chapter 5, verse 18. So then, as through, as through one transgression, there result condemnation in all men, even through one act of righteousness, there result justification of life to all men. The act of righteousness. This is Jesus. That's what Jesus do. He, he obey God and submit himself and to become man. For as though through one man disobedient, the many were made sinner. And even though the obedient of the one that many will be made righteous. This is what this is what Adam did. And we carried the whole human race inside of him to commit sin against God. And then now Jesus, God Himself have to come because He give He give people chance to return. Even He choose a nation and He give the law and then they cannot do it. They cannot make it. You know, even in the book of Acts, chapter 15, Peter and John say, Even our forefather and us cannot do and fulfill the law of Moses. Cannot. They cannot. So that's why Jesus had to come. God himself had to come. 
through the birth, the virgin birth of Jesus. And he obeyed completely. So that's why here the Bible says, through the obedience of the one that many will be made righteousness. Because of Jesus obey God and obey in absolute way. Remember when Jesus before he died, he prayed for over an hour, several times, three times at least. And then he asked God, if thy will can this cup be passed from me? The question is, did you just know what he's coming for? Yes, he know. He know that he come and die for all of us. But because during that time, God himself separate from him. He only have the nature of man only before he die. Remember, God completely separate from him at that time. So he feel abandoned. So that's why in Psalm 22, he said, My God, my God, why are you forsaken me? God completely the divine nature separate from him. He only has a human nature before he go to the cross. So, but he committed. So that's the act of obedience that Jesus did. So we become righteousness of God. And the restoration process begins again. When Jesus come, the Bible said, For God so loved the world, He sent His begotten Son, and those who believe in Him shall not perish and have everlasting life. When we receiving Jesus into our life, that's the beginning of the restoration process. The restoration process to the position of sonship, to the identity of sonship. Remember before that? So that's why when people are not accepting Christian this day, I said, are not accepting Christ this day, sometimes they don't even know their identity. Sometimes they think they are woman. Sometimes they think they are man. And maybe a few minutes they think this way and a few minutes they think the other way. Do you know why? Because Satan works in the mind of people. The mind. They work in the soul, the mind and the emotion. So that's why when, when Satan come and tempted Eve, you know what, what, he, what he's tempted? He's not tempting the spirit, tempting the soul, the feeling, the desire, go through the ear and go through the eyes. Because she see the fruit of Knowledge of good and evil is so good. And gain knowledge and make them equal to God about knowing knowledge of God, good and evil. So that's why they take it. They take it. So that's why only we submit ourselves, our mind, that's mean our soul, our mind, our emotion, and our will to God. That's the only way we can be restored. At least to the level that we have the authority back over the power of darkness, over the power of Satan, over the power of principality and the power of, and the wickedness on high. If we don't submit it to God, our mind, our emotion, and our will they will attacking us. So that's why when people live in a stage of loss, they don't know what their identity. They don't know. So that's why that's why it's happened in the world this day. People think they're born as a man and they think they are a woman. And then they go and have a surgery. And then later on, when they think they're back, a man, they cannot change again. 
and then they so depressed, and then some of them just kill themselves because the the rate of suicide among those people very 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 high compared with the normal one population. Lost identity. So we're living in fear. We're living in hopelessness. We're living in helplessness. We're losing our power. So be, our power become limit. We're losing our nature. All the nature that God giving to us become limit. Our love become limit. Our righteousness become limit. Our holiness become limit. And our faithfulness become limit. So we, that's why people lie. That's why people living a wicked life. So that's why people um, hate one another. Because everything they have, the nature of God giving to them. Either limit or God. Remember the sun, the particle sun. The nature of God, just like the inheritance that that son has. And he asked the father, give it to me. So he go and spend. He spent all whatever good nature God gave it to us when he created Adam and Eve. Initially they lost, and later on they spent. They spent, they spent. To the point that they lost everything. Remember the particle son? And up in the pig farm and then not having enough food so that's how human society to become this day so much hatred so much wickedness so much unrighteousness unrighteousness and so much unfaithfulness it's happened it's happened. So when Jesus come for the purpose to bring us back and restore our identity and our position, but we have to believe in Him. That's why in the book of John said, for those who believe in Him, God give them a power. A power. That's what power, including power and authority. Authority, just like, uh, this is a good example of authority. When every four years we vote to choose a person to become a president of the United States. Whoever got elected, they got the authority and position of the presidency. And then in that position, they had authority and also power. But that power exists by the authority. So the president doesn't have to go to Iraq and fighting the ISIS. But he, his authority can command the general, do this, bring 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 soldier, and how many plan, and whatever need. Go there and take care of the ISIS. So that the power part. And the authority, usually by spoken word. You know, the president doesn't have to do, but he has the authority of 330 million people invest on him to do whatever need to protect this nation. Same thing. When we got restored, God give us the power the authority and the power to become the children of the Most High. Remember? Let me read it to you in the book of John. Okay? So we know this is what God intend for us when we accepting Jesus. And when Jesus come, Jesus come, Jesus come to have the purpose to bring us back to Him. Not only bring us back to Him, give us eternal life, but also give us the power and authority so we can deal with whatever the power of the evil one in this life. And then when Jesus come, return again and the complete restoration, spirit, soul, and body. When Jesus come back again, let me read 
John chapter 1 verse 12. 